I invite you to turn to 1 John for this morning's scripture reading. We'll be in 1 John chapter 3. We'll read from verse 10, uh, 4 to verse 10. <clears throat> the word of the living God. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. You may be seated. We've clearly seen from the Apostle John here that we still confess sin. If anyone has sin, he confesses that sin to the Father, and he will receive forgiveness for that sin. So by no means is this section of Scripture teaching sinless perfectionism, whereby we think that when we're in Christ, there's no longer any sin uh, in us. There's no longer any remaining corruption to us. No, uh, the, the fact remains that, yes, we still battle sin. What this is talking about is a, a pattern of sin or a course uh, in, in the direction of your life that is more likened to a sinful life than that than that uh, which what we would call righteousness but what also is helpful for us to know is that the background to this book uh, the apostle john is writing in response to gnostics and in specific here the gnostics were saying that as long as you had knowledge that was enough if you had knowledge a uh, practice was not really um needed as long as you knew that thing that you were uh, uh, claiming to assent to. They would say things like, uh, knowledge without practice is enough. It does not matter if you material uh, materialize that which you believe into real life. That's why John says, let no one deceive you. He doesn't want anyone to think <clears throat> that merely believing things about Christ is sufficient uh, to say that you know him. What we see here is he's saying, if you've come to know him, if you've come to abide in him, if you've come to truly uh, uh, be identified as a child of God, your life will reflect that confession that you have made. Your life will look like the God that you have, are claiming to love. Um, it says elsewhere, by this you know that, that, that you love me, that you keep my commandments. You keep your commandments to show your love for God, uh, not in a way to earn his love, but because you've been loved by him. And this is, this is truly beautiful because it says that Christ came into the world to destroy the works of the devil. That Christ came into the world to undo that which the devil brought through the first Adam. So church, listen to me. Uh, we've not just been de delivered from the, from the penalty of sin. That's one aspect of the redeeming work of Christ. We've been delivered from the bondage to sin. We're no longer under bondage to sin. We now live under the freedom and the grace of Jesus Christ. So listen, I am as optimistic as they come when it comes to the victory of Christ. And in this victory of Christ, I affirm that his redeeming work secured for himself a people that would be acquainted with holiness, a people that would be acquainted with righteousness, a, a, a peculiar people set apart, a priesthood, a holy nation zealous for good works. Uh, we're not saved by our, our own righteousness, but we are saved unto righteousness. Uh, we're not saved by our good works, but we're saved unto good works. We're called to walk in pureness of life, even as our Savior walked in pureness of life. So in my optimism, I fully affirm all the re realities that we have been given so much blessing in Christ. We've been given an ability to obey Christ, an ability to worship Christ, an ability to truly be uh, living out righteousness in Christ. But in my optimistic view of life, I also know this, that Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. So why are you making friendship with that devil? Why are you making friendship with the sin that Christ came to destroy? I'm as optimistic as they come, but we need to see sin is defeated, yes. It's been vanquished, absolutely, but it still is not a friend to fellowship with. It's a foe that must be slayed day by day in a life of repentance. I have seen the smallest of sins become giant sins in the lives of people that I love, and their life has been ruined because of it. 
I've seen what people kept around as pet sins in their life and, and hidden in their life, and it begins to manifest itself as no longer a pet sin, but it's truly a monster that has destroyed people that I love, people that I care about. I've, se I've seen what sin will do to people. I've seen what sin will do to this world. We must still hate sin. We must hate our own sin first. And when we sin, we confess and we repent. Do not live as a child of the devil. Instead, live as a child of God, as one who is also destroying the works of the devil in him. If Christ is destroying the works of the devil, we do the same in him by destroying that enemy, which is called sin. Christ is a mighty destroyer of sin and death and the enemy. Make no friendship with what Christ came to destroy. As I'm as optimistic as they come, but we cannot minimize what Christ came to destroy. That's how serious sin is. God sent his son into this world to destroy sin. And you want to keep it around. You want to hold it near. You want to justify it. You want to defend it. You want to excuse it. You're calling that which Christ came to destroy something that you want to keep near to your heart. It makes no sense. As someone who's been around the Christian world long enough, I've seen sin destroy people that I love. And it did not start as some grandiose sin. It started as something small, something minor. And they just kept it around. They kept that enemy around, and it destroyed them. Sin is a dragon, but praise be to God that Christ is the dragon slayer. Church, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord.